Hello, Kido! Sir E is here, and today we're going to talk about types of circuit connections. But for this specific blog, we will focus on series circuit. <laughs> Our objective is to explain the advantages and disadvantages of series connections in homes. What is a series circuit? It looks like this. And how do we describe it? In a series circuit, the components are connected one after another in a single loop. You have to remember that in a series circuit, it will always form a single loop. And its component, using this picture, the components are the bulbs or the lamps. So they are connected in a single loop or it has a single pathway. But you have to take note that these bulbs can be placed in different positions like here or maybe on the opposite side. So it's up to you. But you have to remember that it should always form a single loop. Knowing this idea, we can also tell that there is only one pathway through which the electric current can flow. Once more, when we say electric current, as we discussed in the previous vlog, we describe it as the rate of flow of charges. And since the series circuit has single loop, so therefore all the charges can only pass through in a single pathway. For us to further understand the advantages and disadvantages of series circuit, we have to know first its different aspects. And we will describe them based on its current, voltage, and resistance. For its current, we have to take note that it is always the same in every point of all the components. So what do we mean by that? So using this illustration, we got three bulbs and we labeled it as one, two, and three. If the bulb one has three amperes, remember the unit for current is ampere. We will expect that bulb two also has three amperes and the current in bulb three is 3 amperes as well. So you have to take note that in series connection, the current is always equal or the same in all of its component. How about this line, sir, or this wire? So when you check the current passing through this line where the bulb is not present, still it's 3 ampere. How about the voltage? Take note, in our previous teach blog, we also learned that the voltage is the same as potential difference. We describe the voltage of a series circuit as the sum of the potential difference across each component is equal to the potential difference across the whole circuit. So it could be the source or the battery. So in this illustration, we got a source or the socket. But in some other illustration, they might use battery. So what do we mean by this line? With this, we can get the total voltage in the circuit by adding all the individual voltage in the circuit. For us to be clear with this concept, let us take this example. If this socket has 220 volts and we are assuming that the resistance in all of the bulbs are equal, then the voltage present in bulb 1 is 73.33, bulb 2 same, and bulb 3 the same. So applying this line, 
If we add them up, 73.33 plus 73.33 and 73.33, then it should be equal to 220 volts. How about if the resistance in these three bulbs are uneven or not equal? Let's try to have these voltages. So we got 65, 70, and 85 volts. So you just have to remember when you add them up, 65 plus 70 plus 85, it is equal to 220 volts. So that's the meaning of this description, that the voltage or the total voltage in the whole circuit should be equal to the sum of all the potential differences across each component. Lastly, for resistance, the total resistance is the sum of all the resistance. If you are asked to compute for the total resistance in the circuit, you will use this formula. So this is just a simple addition. Typically, the values for the resistance in the bulb or maybe other components are given. So with that, you will just add them up. And as you add them up, you would observe that the total resistance is always greater than the largest of the individual resistance. For us to apply this concept, let us try to answer this problem. By analyzing the diagram, so we got here three resistors. So we have 20, 10, and 40 respectively. And the source has 12 volts. So we have to determine the total resistance. Also, answer which resistor has the highest voltage and which res resistor has the highest current. Let us try to answer this. What is the total resistance in the circuit? Once more, if you are asked to compute for the total resistance in a series connection, you just have to add them up. So we got 20 ohms plus 10 ohms plus 40 ohms is equal to what is our resistance or total resistance for this series circuit. You got it right. We got 70. Letter B, which resistor has the highest voltage? In our preview stage blog, we have learned that resistance is directly proportional to voltage. So with that, R3 has greater voltage than R1, while R1 has greater voltage than R2. With that, the correct answer is resistor 3, which has 40 ohms of resistance. Since it has the highest resistance, it this also has the highest voltage. Last question, which resistor has the highest current? Hmm, what's your answer here? Okay, the correct answer is none of them. Why? Because we have to remember that in series connection, they all have equal current. Despite of having different resistance value, still component one and component two and component three have the same current. I hope the concepts are clear to you now. With that, let us proceed to the advantages and disadvantages of series connection. The advantages of a series circuit are the following. First, easy to build because you will just form a single loop. So it is very easy to assemble. Number two, can add power supply. 
especially for those circuits that are operated or powered by batteries. So you can add more batteries. And lastly, the most important advantage of a series circuit is that it does not overheat easily. With that, for some countries having winter, their Christmas lights are in series circuits because they last for quite some time or for a long period of time. On the other hand, a series circuit also has some disadvantages. Number one, if one bulb does not work, the rest of the bulb will no longer work too. For example, if bulb one malfunctions, then bulb two and bulb three will no longer work. Second disadvantage, the bulb has dim light. This is caused by the division of the voltage coming from the source. For us to visualize this, let's take this simulation. Let's use this simulation to visualize how a series circuit works. We got here three bulbs connected in series, then a switch and two batteries. If you observe, we only have a single loop. So again, this is a series connection. Now, when I turn on the switch, you see that all of them are working. So they are emitting light. Now, let's try to measure the current passing through each component. So by using ammeter. Let's put it here. So as you see, it is 0 0.60. When I move to the next bulb, it is 0.60. And still, it's 0 0.60. Remember, current is the same in all of its components. Even here on the wire, this wire here on the side near the battery. So still, same current. What if one of the bulbs malfunction let's cut it and let's observe what will happen see when one bulb doesn't work then the rest of the bulbs will no longer work remember we only have a single pathway of charges therefore when one is cut the rest will be affected and that is one of the disadvantages of a series circuit. And that's it. We are done. I hope you have learned the concept of series connection. And our next teach block would be parallel connection. So please check this video so that you would learn also the other type of circuit connection. I hope to see you again in my next teach blog. Bye-bye and God bless to all. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.